Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing swimmy. So you'll need the, um, the piece of paper uh, that's on Shutterfly. So this is one of the pages in swimmy. It has the stones and the um, seaweed and you can see the little red fish. So basically why we've been using these these pieces of paper is that Leo Leone did a lot of um, like printmaking and collaging to make his uh, books and illustrations. So kind of showing some of those techniques um, when we're doing our, our art projects. And plus, you know, it's kind of making it a little bit more fun. And uh, we're also learning about how pieces come together for a whole and persevering through our work. So again, with putting the glue on it is that we don't want to have it go up that high. We only want to have it go that high. And we only do the edges, it's more effective. And then when we're done, we put it all the way down so that we keep our glue stick clean of glue. And then we're gonna put this on our paper. And you can use whatever background you want, but I would suggest either the manila color, like yellow or, well maybe not so much yellow, white, um, only because what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna learn how to uh, draw a fish, um, which your kids already know because we did it during fish week. So um, it's a basic fish shape. And um, you, we can, uh, you see here, so part, this is a, color red. So they can go in and kind of color in some of these little red fish and add their own texture to their picture. So there's a bunch of little red fish that can go in and color. And then you can also use um, the marker to go in and kind of color them in and outline them and give a little bit more detail to the picture. And then they're kind of making this a part of ultimately the picture that they're going to be making. So um, we're gonna make swimmy and swimmy is black. So part of that is we're going to, uh, so when you make a, a fish, it's an, you can draw the fish here or you can draw the fish here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my fish up here. So before we are gonna be drawing our fishes on our papers, I'm going to show you how to make a fish. Okay, so it's an oval. And then this part is the tail, the fin, um, not the tail, the fin. And uh, so it's, it's sort of like a, um, a triangle. So you're going up, down, and then up. And then this is a semicircle, another fin. This is a semicircle. And then you're gonna do a semicircle this way and go down, okay? So again, it's an oval, a triangle. So it's like up, down, up, then a semicircle, semicircle. And then we're gonna draw a line here to make the head of the fish, and then we just give them an eye, and then give them a smile. That's why he looks cute, okay? So you can take this fish, you can actually cut him out um, if you wanted to, and I'm gonna use, I have my watercolor, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my black watercolor, and I'm gonna fill him in with black watercolor. So again, with watercolor, the more water you add, the lighter the color is going to be. And this paper is just simple copy paper, so it's, it's going to, um, 
if you put too much water on copy paper, it, it'll um, get holes. So if you have the ability to have construction paper, that that's probably a wiser uh, choice. But just for demonstration purposes, um, I'm just using copy paper. Okay, so this is my swimming. I'm gonna let him dry. So while he's drying, I'm going to draw in some more seaweed. So I'm gonna use my green markers and I'm gonna draw, so seaweed, the kids know, because we did it during fish week, that it's sort of like this um, wiggly, these wiggly lines. And they can kind of, and you can also draw on here, draw on the paper. Make, now the, the best thing to do is to have a variety of greens. So I have, pack of markers that just has a ton of green. Now, if you don't have a variety of greens and you only have one, what you can do is use different, um, so use markers. You can then go and get some crayons and use the crayon, put the crayon over it. And really, this is helping your child practice this movement of holding, right? So it's always, whenever we're doing any of these activities, we're working on our pincer grasp. Okay, I'm gonna add some more here. All right, and then we have these rocks. So I have my different, a few different browns that I can do. So I'm gonna kind of outline the detail of some of these rocks and add my own sort of shapes. And also too, this is a good way to practice tracing. And tracing helps with the eye-hand coordination. And so then I'm gonna um, use some of these similar shapes over here and draw my own rocks over here. And I'm gonna get a different color brown. And like if you, don't, if you only have one brown marker, one brown crayon, just alternate between the two. And it just kind of gives your picture, again, more texture. So I'm just adding some more of those over there. And um, I'll just use a crayon to color in these rocks. Okay, so, and obviously your child's going to be working on, on the table, not upright, but this obviously is easier for me to show you what we're doing. So on the top here, um, we can add um, some waves. And now, the swimmy dry, I can cut them out. Now this, cutting swimmy out is definitely tricky because there's so many different shapes involved. It's not just simply like cutting across. You have to cut around. And this is part of teaching your child like holding the paper and very gently making sure that their thumb is up. That's proper scissor position. And again, so this is kind of, this is be more difficult, right? So I got all this extra paper. So teach your child, oh, you know what? Now it's less heavy when I'm holding it in my hand. And teaching them to turn the paper is very helpful. 
And again, some kids are really good at this and it seems as if they just know. Other children need to practice and they need to be reminded, this is an easier way to do it, why don't you try this? Um, just suggest things. And sometimes some kids have to figure it out on their own, which is um, can be difficult to watch, particularly when you know there's a more effective way. Um, but again, if that's if that becomes uh, problematic, you can always I can always maybe reach out to them to to help them. Okay, so I'm going to decide. I'm not really sure where I want to put my my fish. Is he going to be over here? Is this one of the big fish in the story? Um, you know, or is he kind of looking down and kind of going to come into the school of fish and start talking to them? So you can make multiples of these and make your own um, collage. So um, I'm going to kind of make uh, another fish here. So again, it's an oval and then it's a, a kind of like a triangle. It's kind of you're going up, you're going down, you're going up. And then it's a semicircle, a semicircle. And this is the, another fin where you, um, it's like an arch or almost like if you can see it, it's just like the letter C and then you draw a line down and then you're going to draw the, for the head here and a little circle for the eye and a smile. So I'm just going to kind of have that guy there and, um, I can always then use my water paint and I can always paint on top of this as well. So I'm going to kind of color him in red color. So again, water paint really teaches how to be very patient and gentle with the paintbrush. And that can be very difficult sometimes for four and five year olds, but any art project and any art arts and crafts that you're doing, it, it does take practice. So the more that they do it and the more they're exposed to it, the better they'll get at it, then the more they're gonna wanna do it. All right, so my paper is pretty wet, so I'm gonna be very gentle with it when I'm putting the, the glue on. Like I said, you can make a bunch of different ones um, and you can make your own swimmy collage. All right, so have fun with it and I can't wait to see your creations.